Welcome back to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Getting Started with Thalmcraft 5. Today, we're covering alchemy. To get started in alchemy, you're going to want to make sure that in your Thalmonomicon, you've researched as much as you can. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to research everything in here. And I do recommend you research quite a bit, uh, but uh, you are going to need to do at least some of it before you can move on to other parts of it. I will not be covering everything on this page today. I will just be covering uh, probably the important majority for getting into it. So to start off with, we have our cauldron, which uh, is here. And I'm going to just place up against this stone or this piece of dirt here, hit it with my wand. And we've now got our crucible, which is going to be required for us to progress. Now, crucibles require water in order for them to function properly. So make sure that you do have some uh, a water source nearby, and they will require heat underneath. Now, at the beginnings, you're not going to have access to nitor, so you will need to use an alternate means. In this case, I'm using a um, bit of nether rack underneath it with uh, just lighting it with flint. There we go, it is now bubbling. As you can see here, it is bubbling and therefore ready to accept ingredients. So with your Thalmonomicon, you can actually choose multiple things to go with. To start with, I'm going to show you magic tallow. And this is a very basic recipe uh, used. You can uh, end up making uh, candles with it. And I will show you how this is actually done. So it, with this in mind, it has ignis as the uh, ingredient that needs to already be in the crucible. Then you add your catalyst, which is going to be rotten flesh in this case, and out will pop some magic tallow. So to start that off, I know that nether brick has one ignis on it, which is perfect for what I'm trying to do. And rotten flesh is just going to be added in as the catalyst, so we don't need to worry about the other uh, essentia elements that uh, are based off of it. So let's get up here. You're going to want to be careful because if you stand on it, you can end up taking damage. Uh, I'm in creative, so that's not going to happen. So first you put in your ignis, then you toss in your rotten flesh. And there you go. I now have magic tallow. Now, if I were to wear goggles of revealing when I do this, you will see that there are ingredients in there. You now see the ignis in there. And when I toss in the rotten flesh, I get my second magic tallow, which with a piece of string, I can make myself a candle, which is wonderful because that can be used for infusion altars later on. But for now, I'm just going to explain to you some of the uh, basics on how to find, uh, or at least a list, of some of the items that essentially come with one item on it. Because the last thing you want to do is get a whole lot of uh, taint as I use this here. Currently, there's none in the area, uh, but you don't want uh, taint in your your uh, in your work zone. So you don't want any leftover ingredients to sit in there and fester. Even if you empty this thing out or break it, it will end up going up into the atmosphere and end up uh, eventually causing some uh, bad effects in the area. So to get you started on that, uh, I've got a list of a lot of items here. Not everything, just a bunch of them that will have just one or very few of one. Uh, essentia on the, essentia type on there. In this case, herba you can easily find on wood logs or uh, leaves. Vitreous is going to be in glass. Jellum in a snowball. Potentia you can find one on a redstone torch, and two on a piece of redstone. Kind of weird, but yeah. Uh, and for demonstration purposes, I'm going to grab that later. Machina you'll find on a le uh, lever. Excuse me, a lever. Lux. You'll get uh, off of a torch. You've got Fabrico. Uh, it's the only one I could find that actually had just Fabrico on it was a crafting table. There are, of course, other things that have combinations. Bestia, a piece of carpet. Victus, you'll find on some uh, melon, uh, a melon slice to be specific. Cognitio or Cognitio, uh, you've a piece of paper. Uh, if you go with something more than that, you know, there are other options, but I'm just telling you the one that's simplest. Uh, Volatus, the only one that you can actually get with the feather symbol on it, is scribing tools, which is weird because it's a combination of things making one simpler item. But hey, uh, Aversio is going to be an arrow. Vacuos, you can find on bottles or on a wooden bowl. Uh, metallum, on uh, iron bars or 
any of the nugget types, more or less. Uh, I think there might be one or two that don't do it, but uh, you should be able to get one metallum off of any of those. Census, uh, I've got bone meal here, but it's any of the uh, applicable colors, like uh, lapis or uh, green, you know, pink dyes, and so on and so forth. A any of that stuff should have one census on it. Desiderium, which uh, looks kind of like a little uh, golden hand uh, grasping for something. Sugar and uh, gold coins. You should be able to get one off of each of those, which there are plenty more, as I was saying, but uh, this should get you started on a bunch of them. Uh, now, as for the primals, Ignis on a nether brick, which is just, as uh, you saw over here, I have um, some nether rack and you just toss it in your furnace and it ends up making nether bricks. A very simple and easy way of getting uh, Ignis. Terra, regular dirt, not grassy dirt, but dirt. You should be able to get some off of that. Air, you'll get off of labels, which if you do enough of your research, uh, as you get into warded jars and such, you should end up uh, making labels, which are very simple to make. The recipe is just some paper, ink sack, and a slime ball, assuming that you found a slime ball. We'll get you four of them. So you end up wanting to store a lot of this uh, for future use. Uh, aqua, you can get from warded jars. Whoops, I already have some in my inventory. Uh, warded jars. Uh, the recipe is not coming up here because it is a Thumbcraft created recipe. It is essentially once you unlock it, you then can take some uh, glass panes, five aqua from a wand, and an arcane workbench with a uh, slab, and you'll get yourself a warded jar. Now you toss uh, one of these in, and you'll get two aqua, which I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to take one of, an extra one of those as well because we're going to need that for a recipe coming up here. Now, Ordo and Perdicio, uh, or Entropy, as it's called once it's been refined, um, there aren't singular uh, recipes for that, same with a lot of others, but uh, I'll show you how we can end up getting around that shortly. So, I now have uh, Redstone and a Warded Jar. Well, the reason I have this is because we're going to be making some magic here. We have Potentia and Aqua. Well, guess what I have here? Potentia and Aqua. And there's two on each. I'm going to put the other warded jar back in my inventory. So that should make things quite simple if I'm going to make myself alchemical brass ingots. I just need an iron ingot as a catalyst. Let me grab one of those quick. Here I am here, ready to toss in. Throw in my redstone, toss in my warded jar, and toss in the catalyst. Poof! Alchemical brass ingot. Make a couple of these and you should be able to make yourself goggles of revealing if you haven't already. Uh, otherwise, you can use it to make other things as well. So, like you can make thomium ingots. And uh, as I was saying before, Ordo is not exactly the easiest thing to uh, single out. So there are ways of getting around making single items. And that's what we're going to get into next. Though I do recommend you make yourself as many of the uh, warded jars uh, and files as you can because you're going to need these at some point at least. Once you're able to uh, progress a little further, you can then make yourself some nitor, which once you've made this will make you, as I've shown there, nitor. And it comes in different colors as you see here. I've got like blue, green, red, yellow, and I've got white underneath here. You can actually use it as a heat source for a crucible. And uh, it's a lot safer than uh, just burning things nearby because you never know what might catch on fire, houses included. You'll want to make yourself some Elementum as well, which is a highly explosive fuel source, and uh, that should end up allowing you to get Essentia Distillation, which is going to be paramount in your uh, future experimentation into Thomecraft. So once you've crafted yourself one of these, brass plates are made from just alchemical brass ingots, which I showed you how to make already. Once you make one of these things here, you're going to want to place it down, make yourself an arcane alembic, at least one. I do recommend you probably want more than one to start, and then later on you won't need as many. Um, and uh, of course, arcane bellows can help speed things along quite well. So you just basically take your smeltery, set it down, then your alembic, shift right click on top and place it, and you have yourself a setup here for your smeltery. Now you can actually stack up to five alembics on top and the reason you'd want to do this is uh, because of the multiple elements that may come out of the item that you are smelting. So imagine this is a furnace. Uh, essentially I've got coal in here and the item that you're going to be uh, burning. 
So let's say I take Magic Tallow, which has three different elements on it, uh, two of which are compound elements, the uh, heart and the people that you see as the symbols there. The uh, Fire Ignis is a primal element. But with that, if I put one of these in here, it will actually end up cooking it. I can put another one in there and it's going to cook the next one shortly after. And you'll see it's slowly distilling is what this essentially is. It then takes the those items that I just cooked and turns them into essentia, which will be used for infusion later on, among other things. So it goes into the alembics and you'll see that there are two, three different items up here. We've got Victus, we've got Ignis, and we've got, oh, I can't even remember what that one's called, but it doesn't matter. You can see that because I had at least three on here, it's able to store them. If I only had one and put this in here on this one, it will end up going through, and it ended up cooking it, but you see it's got some smoky stuff going up into the air. That's always a possibility with these. This is very inefficient, actually. Uh, there are different upgrades that you can make, which I'll get into shortly. But essentially, you see it's only holding one item, which is uh, not, the, not the best thing that you could possibly do there. I can put another one on top, but, well, it's already too late. It's finished distilling, if you noticed here. So therefore, it's not going to actually give you any more of your ingredients. And this might not even be the one that you're looking for. So therefore, it's best that when you start, you end up making yourself a bunch of these so that you don't end up losing any of your ingredients. Now you'll notice I have here a warded jar, and in it is some of the ingredients that we had, but the rest of it went up top. Well, early on, you don't actually have to use any of these pipes that I have on the side. You can actually hold an empty one, and once it's done, you're going to probably want to wait till then, uh, you can actually just right click, and it will fill that warded jar with the contents. And you can see now it, it now has Ignis in it. So I can set it down and it's got Ignis. Of course I'm in uh, uh, creative mode so remember when I place things down they still stay in my hotbar. But uh, if I end up taking another empty one and I right click this I then get some Victus. And there we go. Three, two, one and it's like alright well what about this one here? This one here. I'm gonna pick it up and uh, it currently has some of that, uh, that one of that uh, people symbol in it. I can still right click on this one that has more in it. And it will combine them together. And you see that it now has two in it. So that's a quick and easy way at the early stages to get these in here. Now, earlier I said you also want to make a bunch of files. I will show you why. Now I have some files here. And if I right click on these, nothing happens. That's because files will hold eight and only eight of a specific Essentia. Now I have an existing file here. I'm going to use it. I right click on this empty, this uh, warded jar here and you see it has eight air in there. Now if I use an empty one, I can take it back out and move it. On top of that, if I end up using these with the label, I can actually take the blank label, put it in a, a crafting grid plus one of those files and create a marked label. Now, this works in multiple ways, but if I place this on here, only air will go in there. So let's end up putting something like this, the alchemical brass ingot. It's got three metallum and one of that tool symbol, which, I, like I said, I can't remember all of them. But you'll see it'll start distilling, and instead of this going in there, which let me open that up, instead of it going in there, it will end up just going into these. So this is actually open. It should be working. It's not going to, though. Now, if I pick this up, You'll see it's just a regular warded jar, and it's not going to work to uh, grab other items. Reason being is it actually has air as a label on it. So when I put it back down, nothing, it's not going to grab anything off of there. And I could not right-click on there to, or well, I could right-click, but it didn't actually fill the jar with it. Now if I shift right-click the label, it comes off and clears itself, and then it proceeds to actually act like a normal warded jar. All right, so... I've been explaining, we now have a whole bunch of these liquid ingredients. You can keep on distilling items down. If you're not sure what items make what, you can actually go into your thumb, Thumbonomicon and go under Aspects of Magic. And it may take a while for it to scroll through all the different things that you can actually do this with, but if you hover over the element that you're, or Essentia that you're looking for, 
it will tell you the items that contain that and uh, therefore you can actually burn them in here most likely and it will end up distilling them into the different elements that you need if your infusion or other requirements need it specifically my infusion altar setup I have over here has several different kinds of jars. These are void jars. So once they are full, any more uh, essentia that's added to them will just be uh, voided. They will disappear. So it will never overflow or back up or anything like that. Uh, so that's essentially what these are for. And you'll need these in a lot of infusion rituals. For example, previously I talked about the Boots of the Traveler. You see here that uh, we have all the different ingredients and it requires modus and volatus. Well, you'll need 25 and 25 of each in jars near an infusion altar for it to work. This is the main reason why we're ending up doing this. So, there are other options, of course, because in alchemy, you can actually craft things. You can make the brass, you can make the thaumium ingots, you can make uh, metal purification, you can actually uh, duplicate things by tossing in one gunpowder plus a couple of other items. You can make two gunpowder. Uh, you can actually uh, uh, do this with, well, there are multiple items you can actually make more of or different items of. I didn't actually click further along uh, with this. I'm not going to really get into those ones, but you can actually manufacture tossing in dirt plus terra and aqua. You get clay and so on. So you can actually make a lot of things with your crucible. Therefore, very handy, especially if you're able to uh, distill things down in a way that you can actually use it over there. Currently, your crucible, you throw things in, you get things back out. And it doesn't make a lot of sense for how this hooks up with that. Well, that's where the next steps come in. Uh, to start with, I'm going to explain the slurry pumps. These are similar to alembics. Uh, actually, no, they're kind of a combination between an alembic and a smeltery. They're more of like a, a piping system. So essentially, you see I've got a smeltery here, and this one here is a thaumium-based one, which is actually more efficient. If you look at this, this one here, your standard essentia, uh, your standard essentia smeltery ends up having... Um, about 20% of the time you'll end up getting flux out of it, which is not so good. If you're able to make the uh, next best one, the Thaumium, then it actually uh, does 85% efficiency instead of 80%. So, you know, it does 15% uh, possibility of flux. And then, of course, there's a Void Metal one, which I believe is, is that 90 or 95? 95, which is supreme, but <laughs> very difficult and more advanced for uh, what you'd have to research in order to get there. Now, uh, going back to the slurry pump, this essentially acts like one of these uh, smelteries, but you don't interface with it. I'm right-clicking and nothing happens. You put it on the side of a smeltery, and you can actually have multiple things going on. You can have all sorts of alembics on top of each one of these ones. I've set it up a little differently in this case, but you could actually have one pumping out to several things. You can have this on the side, put another alembic on top, and it acts exactly like one of these here, but you can actually have multiples coming out of one system. So it's pretty pretty handy like that. Uh, that's essentially what that is for. Now, moving on though, uh, well, I've covered warded jars. We've covered a little bit of the uh, Sancho smelteries. We've got tubes, but um, you know, I should probably cover tubes. On a personal level, Essentia tubes are not my best friend. I usually don't do too well with them. Uh, there's uh, definitely some huge benefits to using uh, Essentia tubes properly. But um, to start with, you have your basic Essentia tubes, which is here. And you're going to get Essentia tubes as well as Essentia valves. Now, Essentia tubes are basically an automatic way of just right-clicking this. So if this uh, Essentia was in the Alembic, it would end up automatically pouring in there that type of uh, essentia so let me actually get rid of these here I'm gonna place down a regular old empty warded jar there we go so currently that is closed that is open this is my wand if I shift right click on here I can actually change the facing for the valve. And of course, I should say, this is the Essentia valve. This is the regular Essentia tube. 
And the idea is that with an empty hand, if I right click, I can turn it off so nothing will go into here. This one, it will just automatically flow. It has a suction value, which the Essentia Resonator can tell you. If you right click on there, it says suction 31, zero. So if I right click, open it back up, it now says 31. So therefore, these both have equal suction. So if I have an element going into here, it's actually going to pour equally into both of them at the same time. Well, I don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to turn that off, and we're going to put something in. Rabbit hide. That's got a couple different elements on there. All right, so first thing went in. Ah, there we go. The next one went up here. Sometimes it will actually end up coming back down, you know, if uh, it depends on which one ends up pouring, coming in first. So it's, it's all a matter of uh, trying to get things right. Now if I put an Essentia tube here, it should connect to that one. And if I don't want this to connect, I can actually shift right click with my wand and it will actually stop connecting to uh, adjacent items. Right click with my hand, opens up, and there you go. It poured right in. No problem. Now if you have that little steam th noise there, that usually means that there's some kind of issue. But this actually was working because I ended up eliminating this connection. There we go. That makes it all better. I didn't quite eliminate all the connection. My bad. Now there are advanced Essentia tubes as well. If you go into your Thalmonomicon, a little further along you've got advanced Essentia tubes here. There are filtered Essentia tubes where if I uh, put this on here, it then can accept a label. So right now it's blank. It's going to act just like a regular Essentia tube. If I take a label like I have here, plus that Essentia, make a marked label, put that back in my inventory, and I right click, it now will only allow air to transport through this Essentia tube. So for example, if I click on here, it says suction zero untyped, as you can see. So it is currently not going to be working, but if I put one of these here. Therefore, it now has suction 31 air because it is hooked up to something. It didn't have any suction before because it wasn't actually going anywhere. So therefore, by putting that label on here, only air will pass through this pipe now. So you can actually set it up specifically so that only items that you want to go uh, where you want them to go can. Now, if you want that off, you can actually shift right click and it goes away. Now I still have that marked label. It doesn't actually use the label. I am not in creative right now. It just uses it to label that uh, Essentia tube. Now there is directional Essentia tube, which essentially is a regular Essentia tube, but it'll only go in one direction that you specify. And restricted Essentia tube, which is uh, essentially an Essentia tube with half suction. So you can uh, end up changing those around as you need, but I'm not going to be going into those as these are basic enough and often I end up skipping them for uh, my beginning part. Uh, I usually don't bother even making the Essentia tubes. I just end up uh, using the uh, warded jars and files to just click on the Alembics. Now this is a bit crazy looking and it still has not demonstrated how it's going to help us with our uh, Crucible. That's where we get into Essentia Crystallizer. This is fantastic. You move in here, and at the end, Essentia Crystallizer is going to end up making things much, much simpler. So remember before, when I put in the uh, rabbit hide, let's put in a few more here. You can see that it has uh, Bestia and, uh, I, I can't remember what that one is. Uh, I want to say Tenebrae, but it's not. I, it's armor, whatever. But anyway, it, it essentially has two elements going in. There it is, and that is see it, it's not going up to that one because it actually has this already in the right spot. So no big deal. I can actually pick this up, right click that, and therefore it actually will have those two liquid elements going in. This will turn these into a solid, and the advantage of that I will show you in a moment. So I put it in there. It's currently going to go up to these. I have three of them hooked up as an example for the uh, uh, slurry pumps. But essentially, it will then have... Oops, I forgot I still had some left in there. Let me take those out. And actually, hold on one sec. Let's simplify a bit. So with this, we've got the Alembic, 
we've got this, this uh, crystallizer, and I put a chest on top. Now you don't have to have the chest, but I do find it useful. So let's put in some of these rabbit hides. And we should get two different items. And you'll see it actually is making them, popping them out as little crystals. And these crystals actually resemble what I showed you earlier with the Ordo and the Perditio, or Perditio. And they will es essentially be solid components that you can end up tossing into your crucible. Fantastic. So now when you end up cooking stuff, you can end up making exactly the quantities you need without any wasteful overflow or flux going into the atmosphere. Well, maybe a little bit. These things aren't as efficient as they could be. I do recommend you end up upgrading these as quickly as you can as you unlock the research. So, with that in mind, if you put a chest on top, and you end up making these with some more rabbit hides for the example, it doesn't just pop up on top anymore. It instead goes directly into the chest, which is very convenient. And of course, you can always double chest it if you want. And then, as you saw before, I had the, um, the extra slurry uh, thing on the side there, and you could actually have multiples going up. But, you know, one of these is often enough. I find that uh, multiples is only needed if you end up getting into something more automated. Now, of course, there is the Essentic Centrifuge as well, which is another piece of more advanced uh, alchemical information here. Once again, you'll need your Alembic on the bottom, plus your Centrifuge, and you'll want the buffer on top. If you don't have your buffer, uh, it's not really going to work the way you want it to. So what this does is it takes compound elements, in this case, we've got two compound elements on this, and breaks them down into uh, its primal aspects. So if you remember the research game, essentially uh, you break it down until it gets further and further down to its primal aspect. And to show an example, let's put in a piece of rabbit hide and a bit of coal. And that should actually start working. And you'll see it actually has a couple different items here that it has turned those into. It breaks them down one step at a time. So it currently has stuff in here, but it's not going anywhere. Take an essential tube, add it onto the side, and there you go. You can drain them back off. You can then also end up using these in combination with an essential crystallizer. So for an example, so with the Essentia Crystallizer on top, I know it's starting to look a, a bit tall again, but that's all right. We're going to toss a bunch of rabbit hides in here, and you'll see the centrifuge start working, the buffers start working, and as they come up, it is turning those into crystals. So you'll notice that some of them are, well, it's got a variety. Let me put the uh, chest on top here. So you can see the different kinds that are going to end up populating in here. We've got Victus, we've got Modus, and you saw we probably had some Terra as well before I ended up knocking these all down in the ground. There you go, some Terra. And essentially you could uh, put them back in, Spiritus, and it will end up cooking that and making those into Victus and Mortus, I believe. And then you could even put those back in again and break them down another step. So if you have something that is made up of very complex uh, essentia or aspects, then you could end up breaking them down one step at a time into multiple levels to get anything and everything that you need in the quantities that you want. And then use those ingredients in your crucible to make exact ingredients and no longer have any of that nasty purple stuff in the air. So there are some more uh, advanced items like automated alchemy, essentia transfusion, uh, getting into uh, some of the more dangerous forbidden knowledge. But um, let's just say one last thing. Before, uh, let's say that you, in the process of doing all this, have some bad things going on. Well, there is purifying bath salts that you can make uh, that will put things off temporarily at least if you're suffering from a lot of negative warp effects on your person. Uh, now 
from that you can also make sanitizing soap which is much more effective and of course the arcane spa relaxing in style yes uh, and they all work similarly to the way that they did in Thongcraft 4. Now I do have another video up for that but uh, it's going to be similar not the same so uh, just a, a quick heads up and if you do need to control taint in the environment if you look over here I have this little tainted area and you'll notice I have lots of little plants it would actually continue spreading constantly everywhere and I, I kind of went a little crazy with the number of plants I was very uh, eager to control it quickly uh, and actually it changed this tainted node into an unstable node instead which is much better and safer for me and anybody else nearby but essentially you can make ethereal blooms which by tossing in a shimmer leaf plus the required ingredients vitium being one of them uh, you can actually make some of these plants which will end up eating up taint in the area will actually turn it into kind of a foam maybe even leave behind some porous stone or some uh, uh, other artifacts that are left over from the transformation back into something less deadly um, also they will end up uh, help contain a bit of uh, the eerie biome effect from a sinister note oops that just kind of backfired uh, but I think that was just a little glitch here, but usually the ethereal blooms will end up uh, at least creeping it back a bit and help to offset some of the biome, eerie biome creep, but that, that just stays near this. It doesn't actually expand like the tainted stuff does. So that about does it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this uh, getting into the alchemy information on your Thaumonomicon in Thaumcraft 5. And until next time, See ya.